Welcome to the Grief Bully Podcast. I am your host, Jay Nicole. Thank you for joining our weekly discussion around grief, mental health, and your overall personal wellness. The Grief Bully Podcast will serve as a vehicle to help you navigate life's journey. Be sure to subscribe, review, and share the podcast with anyone in your life that you think it will help. Let's bully grief together. What's up? What's up? What's up, beautiful people? Welcome back to another episode of Grief Bully Podcast. I am your host, Shane Nicole. Guys, we're back in the building, rocking and rolling for another episode. And I hope you're doing well. And thank you for showing up and getting into this conversation with me today. So I want to talk about this. How long, how long does our trauma actually stick with us, stay with us, and follow us? And I'm saying follow because I feel like the trauma that I've been through lately, it just seems to be following me around, like literally like nagging me. And what I mean by that is this. I've gotten to a point now where I answer the phone and I'll listen to hear what someone says before I speak I want to know what's going on is somebody screaming in the background is somebody hollering in the background like what is actually going on before I say hello now I wonder actually in this moment I'm thinking about it if someone was in a vibe that I wasn't feeling or something was negative am I going to hang up no so I don't know what I'm bracing myself for it's just that I've gotten so many bad phone calls like traumatic terrible phone calls that it's just a thing for me. When will I be able to work through that? Like, when will it stop plaguing me? One of the absolute worst phone calls that I actually got was when my friend Moet passed away. It was May 25th, 2013. And I get this call from my friend. And he's like, hey, they found Mo unresponsive. And I don't think he said, hey, he said, they found Mo unresponsive. And at that time, unresponsive to me didn't mean dead. I'm just thinking it like that to me means someone passed out. And this is just like a random Saturday morning. Like this isn't, you know, somebody's out late at night or, you you know, you expect that something has happened or it's a weird off time. Like maybe it's in the middle of the morning or something like that. But no, it was like a Saturday morning and I get this phone call. And immediately my legs just buckle from underneath to me when he's like, I'm like, I'm responsive, I'm responsive. What do you mean? He's like, she's gone. Man, when I tell you my legs collapsed, I got in my car, I drove as fast as I could to get to the location. And then everything starts to set in on what actually happened that I really lost my friend. Like I really lost somebody that meant a lot to me. But it all started that downward spiral from a conversation from a phone call that was 11 years ago now so it's not the first and only and it certainly won't won't be the last but it just got me thinking about it like is there truly a point of doing all of this work like doing the inner work when you're still going to have to continue to combat it and I guess I'm I guess I'm figuring it out. I would say yes, it it is valuable to do the work, to work on ourselves, to navigate through these journeys, to make sure that it's it's not going to compound, but man, getting those phone calls terrible. Terrible. If if a phone call has disrupted you and you still have a fear of getting those calls, drop some comments and let me know because I'm really just sitting here thinking that I don't want to feel like that anymore. I want to be able to answer a call and be okay and know that this, look, whatever it is, the situation is just totally fine. And I think this can just transcend to different things. It's it's just like this too. So sometimes or recently I've had someone going through something similar with a parent that I've have experienced. And it's like, you have to find that balance of not, making it a mirror effect and I'm just making that up right now so I don't even know if a mirror effect in terms of like your grief your trauma and your experiences is a real thing but I'm just going to say it and what I mean by that is seeing what someone else is going through and then not making it like not starting to get sad kind of like in a premeditated if that makes sense like thinking like oh man I 
I've seen this show before. I know how this is going to end because you don't necessarily. And so far, it hasn't panned out that way, to be honest with you. But at the time, it's like, I think I just start to feel bad for a person thinking like, oh, I've been through that. I already know what this is going to be like. This is going to be super difficult for them. Like life's going to get flipped upside down. I don't want to see my people hurting. I don't want to see anybody going through that. But it's like, don't do that. But again, it's the trauma that is nagging me. It's like, stay in your place. I used to say, tell a child to stay in a child's place. Like, I want to tell my trauma and stuff to stay out of this. It has nothing to do with you right now. Don't poke your head in it. Allow me to stay objective. Allow me to be present for my friends. Allow me to be present for my loved ones. Do not blind my eyes and make this about me. This is an internal thing, right? Like, I'm not... I don't feel like I'm projecting. I don't feel like people on the other end can notice that and pick up on it, but just some internal reflection with it where it's like, okay, I think this or I think that. Just talking about things that I think I, I was just recently having a conversation that I feel like somebody in my life isn't necessarily being fully transparent with their health. But I'm like, well... If they're not, I think we all kind of have a right to our privacy. And if we're dealing with something that we don't want to share with other people, maybe we think it'll be too much for them. Maybe we think it'll it'll hurt them or it'll just disrupt any time or anything like that that we may or may not have. So I guess on one hand, I, I can respect it. But on the other part of it, again, it's a similar thing that I've been through before. So it's that projecting. And I don't think it's the outward projecting. It's been like internal stuff. Like, why are you getting upset and crying as if this person died when they're not? They're they're definitely alive and well to our knowledge. So then stay there. So I guess that's a part of it. Like maybe when maybe when we feel that trauma kind of nagging us, maybe when we feel that that pressure, those emotions building up, we can say like, hey, like stay present, like stay present. You're right here right now. Like don't get too far ahead when it comes to the situation in this scenario. Like everybody's life is different. And I think it really challenged me because I'm a believer. So I do believe in a higher power. I believe that there's a God. I believe that there's a power greater than me. I'm most certainly still exploring what all of that looks like. But for me, I do believe that. So it's like, well, if you believe this, then you have to believe that no matter what circumstances that you're presented with, whether it's something that someone else is going through or whatever the case is, like it's going to it's going to essentially work out how it's supposed to. So the trying to worry it away in advance or give someone, I don't know if it's like a disclosure, but saying like, hey, I've been through that before, just so you know at this stage or this step of it, this is what's going to happen. I think if we're talking about business or something like that, that could be beneficial to give people a play by play or let them learn from your experience. But when it comes to like losing someone in their life or being faced with those kind of circumstances, I think if, if the advice is not solicited or asked for, my opinion is not asked for, then I got to shut up and, and tell my in, inner trauma and my issues and things that I've been through to kind of like chill. I think the same thing can be said for like relationships, you know, like you can a person that you're that you're newly dating or newly married to or whatever. The case, I was just let's just say dating. Right. Because I don't know if you would make it to marriage if this becomes a problem. But when you're first dating someone and they are now being punished or at the mercy of from something that they didn't even do. So they're not the person that cheated on you. They're not the person that treated you poorly and, and badly or was lying to you. But because you have that clouded, distorted vision or clouded, distorted hearing, because, again, what we hear and we see in these relationships is based on our experience. So letting that trauma and those pains rear their heads and get in the way of what could possibly be great. So when does that go away? Because, again, I know people that have been married a few times or in and out of relationships and they say it's just like I just really can't trust people. Is that is it that easy to 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 trust or do we have to maybe I'm not doing a deep enough dive on the trauma? I don't know. What do you guys think? Like, let me know in the comments about that. Like, do you think that 
there's a possibility for us to get to this totally healed version or this to totally restored version? Or will we always kind of be a little bit reluctant in circumstances that bring up a familiarity to a pain that we've experienced in our lives? I don't know. I don't know. But I wanted to look into that and, I, and talk about it. And I do think that from a relationship standpoint, because again, grief is not just about death. It's about loss. It's, it's actually defined as deep sorrow. And if there is any sorrowful experiences that we go through, it's definitely heartbreak when it comes to love and romantic relationships. And I do think that that's one area that that carryover of what we experience. Now, I wonder if we ever can challenge ourselves the opposite way. So say if you had really great times in a relationship, will that feelings translate? Usually if it ended, then it's like, that was great. That part of them was good. But what about the bad? It's like always that doom and gloom with things. And I don't know how we get back to, to that restoration place. I hope that we can and we can continue to just not live and that's why when I talk about I miss a part of me that died when certain people did or when things change, it's because it, I'm not like distorted, but it kind of like took a lot from me. It took a lot from me when it comes to like being jovial, I guess, and, and more, I want to say like, like optimistic because I like to think I'm optimistic, but just knowing that the other shoe could drop at any time. A very wise man, one of my really good friends, said something recently that I thought was super powerful, and I'm going to share it with you. A little bit off topic, but that's okay. We can go there. We can go there. We can go there. He said, don't move through life thinking about what someone wouldn't do. Oh, no, like they would never do that. They would never do that. They've never done that. I know they won't do that. And make decisions and move based on what they can do, what they could do what's possible for them to do. And that's with everything, what you share with people, what you allow people access to in your life, what you count on people for. It's like, think about that. People who are married, y'all are all in for the most part. Like they know a lot of parts of you that no one else does. And so we're trusting that even when things aren't good, when we're no longer committed to these vows and we're no longer seeing life through the same the vantage point that I have to trust that you're going to always keep my best interests at heart and that you're going to always feel that way, keep things confidential, not screw me over, not take advantage. And so someone could look at that and be like, well, I don't want to move through life that way. For me, it's like I don't want to put anything past anyone, anyone, anyone. And, I, and I'm going to go as far out to say, like even myself. Because that's the thing. We always like to say like, oh, I would never do that. I would never. Circumstances change behaviors. Circumstances change outcomes. There are certainly small things where I'm like, I rarely curse like that, to be honest with you. But for me to be like, oh, I would never curse someone out in public or I would never do this and that. No, that's not true. Because depending on the circumstance, I very well may curse you out. It's not something that you're used to. It's not in, really in line with my character, but it's certainly a, in there. It's in there for sure. And I think that brings me to like one of my like final points that I kind of wanted to talk about too is that it's the part of our character that we felt already passed, passed. Okay, so that is double. We've already overcome past tests. There we go. Because I was saying we already got past, past tests, whatever. Anyway. So say, for example, if you did some inner work, you worked on yourself, you worked on your trauma, you worked on your triggers, right? Because this one is a little bit more in line with triggers. And you're like, oh, no, that person never going to see me act out of character. I'm not letting that happen because I don't like that part of me. I don't like that part of me when I'm like that. But then that test comes when that person tests you and that trigger comes and you getting up, getting ready to get up out of character I, I continue to fail. I continue to fail. And I, well, recently, I think I've kind of overcome a little bit and, and made some progress in that area. But that is one thing where it's like, OK, now I'm yelling. Now I'm screaming. Now I'm at a level and I'm operating in a character that I'm not proud of. So, again, I can't say what I necessarily wouldn't do. 
I can only say what I won't do based on these circumstances. When the circumstances change, I don't know. The verse that version could potentially change. And I think that's a fairness for everybody. So like, are we, are we kind of like holding people to a fair standard or a fair expectation? I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure about that. I think it's one of those things where we like to think of stuff in a situation where it's like, okay, I expect this from you no matter what. I can't keep you in context because of what you told me you wouldn't do. But I think there should be the disclaimer that I told you I wouldn't do that when X, Y, and Z was the situation. Now that that's changed, I can't hold, I can't be held accountable for that anymore. I think it's going to be another conversation that we're going to get into soon. Talking about that, the expectation that we have on ourselves and other people, accountability and honesty as it pertains to our mental health and where that all intersects with friendships friendships i've seen some things online recently that kind of like had me thinking a little bit about that and just i don't know she used the word idol and a friendship making a friendship an idol and like worshiping so like worshiping something other than a god like something that it takes this precedent in your life and where that actually puts things in and and what it i don't want to even want to use the word I don't want to use the word like a prison, right? So maybe I'll say like that imprisonment or where it keeps you bound, if that makes sense in certain regards. So we talked a little bit today about like a romantic dialogue, but then let's talk a little bit more about the platonic aspect and where that aligns with our, with our mental health and what we're actually trying to accomplish, right? On this journey for life. Like we want to keep having these conversations because The grief and loss experience is so multifaceted, but in the intro of this show, it's not just about grief and loss. It's about our mental health and our overall personal wellness and just making sure that we're looking at everything from as as many angles as we possibly can to get the recipe, right? To, To be able to cook up the best part of ourselves that we can. And then this is the other thing, like I always say, to then lean and reach out and extend that to someone else and let them know like, hey, I picked up this gem along the way. I hope it can help you in your life in one regard or another. And then, yeah, you'll be a good Samaritan. It'll be like the gift that keeps on giving. So yeah, let's let the Grief Bully podcast be the gift that keeps on giving. Whatever you learn here, if you learn anything here, please don't be stingy and selfish with it. Definitely share that with people in your life. Keep showing up, dropping your comments, showing the love, sharing the episode if it applies to you. I appreciate you guys. I'm going to keep showing up as long as you'll have me. But uh, in the meantime, till next time, definitely go follow me over on Instagram where I hang out the most at I underscore AM underscore Jane Nicole. Guys, the next time you already know, love and light. Peace.